So, you're after a 3D printer, the best 3D printer for your needs. Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Angus and I have personally tested and reviewed over 70 3D printers over the past 10 years on this channel. Yeah, that's a lot of 3D printers. I've seen everything from incredibly capable budget machines to hugely expensive paperweights and I get it, choosing a machine in this sea of choices is not easy. It's awfully tempting instead to go find a video with some cool looking dude who simply tells you, hey, you should get this 3D printer. It's the best. Click my affiliate link in the description below to find out more. Problem solved. Or is it? Okay, full disclosure. I am very guilty of doing this sort of thing myself. I use affiliate links on occasion. And well, if people are looking for that kind of content, why not make it? I always try to present the full picture when reviewing products but I too can get caught up in the hype of new features and fancy marketing. It can get a little bit difficult. But the thing is, I can't tell you what 3D printer is best for you and your very unique specific needs. As Doug DeMera would put it, I show you the quirks and features of something and your specific use case may or may not align with them. But I'll be honest, the relationship between companies, reviewers and the audience is kind of broken right now. And it's a large reason I've personally backed away from reviews in recent years. I don't want people to spend their hard earned money on something just because of hype. I actually created an entire video course a few years back, which was designed to help you buy your first 3D printer by considering every single aspect and comparing them against your specific use case. I did this using spider graphs, these web-like charts, which highlight the strengths and weaknesses of a given trait. For example, do you build a kit 3D printer or do you buy one fully assembled? A kit will be cheaper and you learn a lot about how electromechanical systems work along the way, but a fully assembled machine can be printing within minutes of getting it out of the box. Neither choice is right or wrong, it's just up to personal preference. But considering these differences is hard and time consuming, and it can be hard knowing what you want before you've even defined the problem you're actually trying to solve. So let's cut through the hype, the brand cultism and the dodgy marketing that pervades the industry today. I'm gonna to run you through every single 3D printer I've used over the past 10 years to actually make my projects. Let's see if you can pick up a trend. And we'll start back in 2012 with a tier time up mini. I owe this little 3D printer a lot. It was the first 3D printer I ever bought, paying $1,500 Australian way back in 2012 to get it. And it really did set me on this trajectory of 3D printing as a career. It was small <laughs> with a tiny print volume of 120 by 120 by 120 millimeters. And it was really noisy. You had to print on a raft due to the perforated print surface. And it only printed well in the ABS that tier time provided, which printed at a really high 260 to 270 degrees Celsius print temp, which is way more than normal ABS. And also they had their own proprietary slicer that you couldn't use for anything else. But Boy, was it reliable. I had a hunch that it'd be half decent because I'd been printing using their original printer, the Tier Time Up 3D printer, which was owned by the Robots and Dinosaurs hackerspace at the time. When it first arrived, one of the plastic bed clips had actually broken in shipping. So I quickly 3D modeled one up in SolidWorks at the time and held the bed in place with my hand as it printed its own replacement part. And honestly, that was really the only thing that ever really went wrong with it. I only replaced nozzles and that was about it. It was an absolute beast then, and honestly still is now at what it does well, which is ABS parts smaller than 100 by 100 by 100 millimeter cube, because yeah, you couldn't print all the way into the edges. It was really reliable, especially when compared to anything else that was on the market at the time, and when it comes to print quality, this machine was really sharp with their slicer having some of the best support generation available on the consumer market at the time. These prints were done on this machine over 10 years ago. It's pretty impressive. I used the App Mini as my main 3D printer for projects even as sexier, larger 3D printers came along purely for its reliability and print quality. And that trend continued when I moved on from it in 2015 to the Up Mini 2. That's right, Tier Time released an updated version of the Up Mini and this machine was a beast. I used it for ages. By this time, Tier Time had opened up the slicer a little bit to allow custom temperatures and a few modern comforts like somewhat customizable support structures. I used the Up Mini 2 well up into 2017 to print PLA, 
ABS, and even polycarbonate blends. It was a tiny print volume, but it just kept going when other machines wouldn't. And during these few years, I reviewed a ton of other 3D printers on the channel, but none really took over the role of reliable printing for my various projects, unless I couldn't fit them again into the tiny print volume of the Up Mini 2. However, as 2018 rolled along, the cracks were beginning to show. I was getting really sick of Tier Time's proprietary slicer and lack of innovation for the company in general. Slicers were evolving rapidly by this time and I wanted to do more advanced things like variable layer heights, fully customizable supports and different infill types. So another 3D printer rose up to take its place. The original Prusa Mark II and then very shortly thereafter, the Prusa Mark III. The Mark II was good, but the Mark III fixed so many problems that had been holding back the i3 platform till that point. It had an innovative first start wizard, automatic bed leveling that actually worked, and a magnetically attached spring steels print sheet with powder coated PEI for easy part removal. I know that pretty much every printer on the market has this feature now, but at the time it was incredibly unique and honestly a game changer. No more scraping parts of the print bed and ruining a bed level. You could just take the print sheet off, let it cool, stick another one on and continue printing your print jobs. The Mark III was my solid go-to for many years, even though it meant loading up the SD card with G-code and running down the stairs to the garage to manually start a print, it produced many of the mechanisms that I've shared on the channel since. It's worth noting that the prints always had this sort of rippling artifact on them, which isn't desirable, and it's something that wasn't ever really truly addressed in my opinion, but beyond that, the machine was super reliable and I used it for many, many things. And if you haven't picked up on it yet, that's the one trait that links all of these 3D printers together, reliability. If a print is started, I want it to finish, and I want it to finish successfully. I don't wanna to have to start a print again three times and waste a spool of plastic and a week of my life to get one usable model. Because let me tell you, among these 3D printers, countless others came and went. There were fast printers, printers that could also CNC or laser cut, printers with gigantic print volumes. None of these were reliable enough to earn their place in the Maker's Muse studio. They're all quickly moved on to new homes to make space for the next batch of review units. I am fully aware that this comes from a position of privilege considering the nature of my job. But if a 3D printer messed up big time, say the nozzle assembly broke or the bed leveling wasn't reliable, it just wasn't used ever again. In fact, thinking back on it, so many brands were legit selling completely unfunctional crap and just expected the 3D printing community itself to fix what they couldn't be bothered with. That's pretty pathetic. Anyway, fast forward to the second half of 2024 and boy have things changed because most companies that have survived this long have actually gotten their act together to make printers that actually print. Enter Bamboo Lab. My relationship with this brand is complicated, but all other factors aside, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon quickly became the most used printer in my studio after I reviewed it at the start of 2023. I'd go so far as to say it actually changed the way I approach 3D design and 3D printing. In the past, I would spend my time working on a 3D model and then I'd send it to the printer overnight to print, and then I would inspect and continue the design process later. But with the X1 Carbon and subsequent machines, they print faster than I can design, which means that design projects can be realized in a fraction of the time that they used to take. So does that make the X1 Carbon the best 3D printer? Well, no. There's things I like about it, for sure, but there's also things I don't like about it. I'm not a big fan of how the hardware is completely proprietary and locked down, and the company's direction in firmware updates makes me worry about how accessible the machine might be in future to other brands of filament and other slices, but it does print really well, so I continue to use it. And in fact, to complement the X1 Carbon, I actually use their more affordable A1 Mini Heat for prototyping. It's a really solid first printer, but again, it has some features that may be a deal breaker for you. Or maybe you just don't really care if the company locks you down to their own filament and slicer in future, as long as it just keeps printing. And as the second half of 2025 rolls through, I'm finding myself using the Prusa Research Core 1 more and more as an excellent fast 3D printer for my projects with a reliability that I can depend on from a company that's a little less cagey about their software and hardware implementations. As a maker, I've always viewed 3D printers as a tool which create physical items for me from my 3D designs and not as a hobby in itself. But again, that's an equally valid approach 
If you want to build a Voron, for example, or design your own machine from scratch, go for it. It's an awesome achievement and an excellent learning experience. It's just not for me. I haven't even touched on resin 3D printers in this video because they're a completely different beast and one I have personally decided I don't really want to interact with due to the mess and safety concerns. For the projects I make, the incredible print quality you can get off resin isn't worth the hassle, so I just personally don't bother with them. But again, your needs might be different. If you're going to take away just one thing from this video, please do your own research and think long and hard about what you want to use 3D printing for before purchasing one or buying one for, for someone else. Don't get caught up in the hype and flashy marketing because these are complex machines. They are not toys. And I'm sure with a bit of research, you'll find the best 3D printer for you. Oh, and one other thing, don't pre-order any 3D printers. It is not the era where you need to do that anymore. Don't order a machine on Kickstarter from an established company because then you're just accepting all risk and you'll have to do the testing for a brand new product. Let other people do that and instead just buy off personal experience and friendly recommendations from people who actually have the machine you're interested in, not what brand has the best affiliate commission rate. If you'd like to continue this discussion, then why not join the Makers Muse community? I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have, plus you get access to behind the scenes content, our highly successful troubleshooting forum, and much more. There's links to it in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, bye.